Former California Congressman T.J. Cox was arrested Tuesday morning by the FBI in Fresno. Court documents say that Cox has been charged with 11 counts of money laundering, 15 counts of wire fraud, one count of campaign contribution fraud, and one count of financial institution fraud. He has pleaded not guilty. Cox served as representative for California's 21st Congressional District from 2019 to 2021. Despite a push for green energy, the governor proposed a plan to keep the state's nuclear reactor open. He said it's in order to facilitate the transition to clean energy. But shutting the plant down altogether has met with bipartisan opposition. Governor Gavin Newsom proposed on Friday that California's last nuclear power plant at the Diablo Canyon nuclear power plant continue running for up to 10 more years. His plan will keep the plant operational from anywhere until 2030 to 2035. Nuclear power will make up for gaps in the state's transition to more green energy. Diablo Canyon currently powers 9% of the state. Calls for closing the plant have mostly come from environmental groups, citing costs and potential natural disasters. But keeping Diablo Canyon open has received bipartisan support, attracting the backing of California Republicans and U.S. Department of Energy Secretary Jennifer Granholm. Additionally, a joint Stanford-MIT study published last November showed that the plant would save the state billions of dollars if kept running until 2035. Newsom's announcement comes as he's pushed to make the state a model for green energy. Jim Phelps, a California utility expert, previously warned Epic TV of the state's pursuit of becoming green. He mentioned greenwashing. When states like California cannot produce enough green energy, they buy out-of-state brown energy and use legal loopholes to relabel it as green. Under the new proposal, one of Diablo Canyon's nuclear units would close in 2029 and the other as late as 2035. Daniel Hall, NTD News, California. A 12-year-old California boy was arrested Tuesday after stealing the family minivan and taking it on a wild ride that led police on a cat and mouse chase. According to the Fresno County Sheriff's Office, a 12-year-old boy was arrested on Tuesday for stealing the family minivan and taking it on a joyride, leading the police on a high-speed chase. The child driver rammed into an advertisement sign and refused to pull over. The boy speeded up to over 70 miles per hour, ran into stop signs, and drove on the opposite side of the road. Deputies tried several times to disable the minivan by setting up spike strips. Eventually, the minivan's tire was damaged after hitting one and the driver was forced to stop. The 12-year-old is booked into Juvenile Hall and charged with auto theft, evading police, and assault with a deadly weapon. Police later learned that the young boy took his family car and intended to drive to his old home in Sacramento. No one was injured. Daniel Hall, NTD News, California. As the California drought worsens, new water restrictions are hitting part of the state. In Southern California, Los Angeles residents have been asked to stop all outdoor watering for two weeks. Entity's Bill Thomas explains why the cities are asking this of their residents. More than 4 million Los Angeles County residents will be asked to suspend outdoor watering for 15 days next month while the Metropolitan Water District, or the MWD, repairs a leak in a water pipeline. The repairs will take place between September 6th and September 20th. The shutdown will impact residents in the cities of Beverly Hills, Burbank, Glendale, Long Beach, Pasadena, San Fernando, and Torrance. L.A. County residents in the Central Basin Municipal Water District, Foothill Municipal Water District, Three Valleys Municipal Water District, and West Basin Municipal Water District will also be impacted. Earlier this year, officials say they found a leak in the 36-mile upper feeder pipeline which delivers water from the Colorado River to Southern California. The pipeline has been running at reduced capacity after a temporary repair while officials designed a more permanent solution. Brent Yamasaki, Systems Operations Manager for the MWD, said, We need to make this urgent repair to ensure this infrastructure can continue serving Southern California in the immediate term and for years to come. And we don't take this call lightly, but it is what is needed at this time. Prior to the shutdown, officials recommend delaying new plantings until after September 20th, avoiding fertilizing lawns and plants, and turning the sprinkler timer off on the evening of September 5th. Residents can view a map of affected areas and learn more information by visiting mwdh20.com shutdown. Bill Thomas, NTD News, Los Angeles. 
A Southern California military base delayed the test of an intercontinental ballistic missile, or ICBM. They said it was to avoid stoking recent military tensions across the Pacific. According to the U.S. military, it carried out a test of a Minuteman III intercontinental ballistic missile from Vandenberg Base in Southern California on Tuesday. The military said the test was delayed so as to not escalate tensions as China saber rattles near Taiwan. The Chinese regime carried out live fire drills in the Taiwan Strait after House Speaker Nancy Pelosi visited the self-ruled island. The military said in a statement that the test showed, quote, the readiness of U.S. nuclear forces and provides confidence in the lethality and effectiveness of the nation's nuclear deterrent. About 300 such tests have occurred before, but they were not the result of any specific global event. It's not every day you find a castle in California, but did you know there's one in world-renowned Napa Valley? And today's Eileen Ang hears a story from the owner who built it. A 13th century Tuscan-inspired castle sits on a hill in Calistoga, California. It's called Castello di Amorosa, or the Castle of Love. And the owner, Dario Satui, put a lot of heart into building it. First, we'll have a drawbridge, mm -hmm. and it really works. And we have a mechanism upstairs wow. for uh, taking up the drawbridge. And then the doors, all handmade, every nail, every spike, everything made over the open fire. Wow. And they weigh nearly a thousand pounds each. They're about eight, nine inches thick. And wow. um, we uh, brought them over from Italy. Satui is a fourth generation winery owner. He follows in the footsteps of his great-grandfather, who immigrated to San Francisco from Italy in 1882. Satui has always enjoyed old architecture, especially medieval and Renaissance architecture. In 1989, he took a hiatus to Italy and lived in Rome for six and a half months. On the weekends, he often drove out to the countryside in a rented car and went to abandoned homes, churches, palaces, and castles. I would bring a sketch pad, a measuring tape, a camera, and a hammer. A hammer to break in if I couldn't find a window that was open. I never stole anything. I always you know, put the door back with a nail. His fascination was much more simple at that time, with no intention of building his own real castle. His vision for this property here was to build a, a small 8,500 square foot Tuscan village style winery. But uh, as you know, um, he, got, he got a little carried away on this project. So now it's 136,000 square feet. Spanning three acres, the castle consists of nine levels with five underground and four above. There are five towers and 107 distinctive rooms, 95 of which are used for winemaking. To keep it as authentic as possible, he built it using the techniques people would have used centuries ago. He had up to 17 people chisel the basalt stones by hand, and he used grout, a mixture of lime, sand, and water, to hold the stone and bricks together like people did in the Middle Ages. Castles evolved over time. So if you look at the walls of an, a European castle, you can often see the history. For instance, they ran out of stone, of uh, this type of stone, so we had to, because 50 years later, the stone was exhausted from this quarry. So they had to go to another quarry and find stone, and that's why the stone is different. They shipped over 200 containers of materials, mostly bricks, from Italy, Austria, and Romania. In total, about 850,000 old bricks were shipped from Europe. Some of the stones were also from Napa. One of his favorite rooms in the castle is the Great Hall. The frescoes on the walls provide a glimpse into the centuries-old Italian lifestyle. So here the ruler would hold court. He would adjudicate um, disputes. Um, he would try to impress and, and, and put fear into his neighbors because of his richness, his power. Here they would eat, here they would have their festivities. Satui built a church in the castle because people in the Middle Ages were very religious. He had an Italian artist paint the frescoes. This, believe it or not, is a um, depiction of the seven deadly sins, gluttony, jealousy, so forth. And it's a copy from a, the main church in San Gimignano in 
in Tuscany, but a lot of people get offended by this, but this is what the Catholic Church was telling the peasants and others what was going to happen to them if they committed any one of the seven deadly sins. Another favorite room is the 12,000 square foot grand barrel room, which is temperature adjusted to age wines. The ceiling is 14 feet tall and has 40 ribbed cross vaults. The Romans not only invented the brick, they invented the cross vault. The cross vault was meant to distribute the weight to the columns or to the walls so you could put weight up above the cross vault. Other features include the main tasting room, a deep well, an armory, and even a torture chamber. The knight's room, among others, serves as wine tasting rooms. <coughs> there is a farm on the side of the castle with goats, chickens, emus, and more. What he's created and what he wanted to create was a sense of family, a sense of community, and uh, recreating what he experienced at his great-grandfather's winery in San Francisco. This year is also the castle's 15th anniversary since it opened to the public in 2007. Tours and wine tasting at the castle can be scheduled online. Eileen Ang, NTD News, Calistoga, California. A California zoo has a new baby deer, and it's as tiny as can be. The species is the world's smallest, standing less than two feet tall when fully grown. Here's a look. The Oakland Zoo has welcomed a tiny newborn southern poodoo, the world's smallest deer. The mother poodoo, Riley, gave birth on August 7th. According to the lead zookeeper, Riley had been on an injectable form of birth control, which does wear off over time. We had a feeling that it might be coming. She was looking a little bit heavier. Um, but uh, midday on Sunday, we, it was actually me, I was passing by the exhibit and looked over and saw her uh, doing some movements that looked very much like she was in labor. The zoo keeps some animals on birth control to give zookeepers more opportunity to observe and learn about the species prior to its breeding. The poodoo is a relatively new animal at the Oakland Zoo, so zookeepers want it to be ready and have a safe habitat prepared for the species when they did begin to breed. I think it is very high up there in the cuteness factor. Um, compared to some of our other animals, definitely. I have enjoyed these guys as soon as they got here. I've enjoyed them so much. Uh, they've been very comfortable being out in the open and visible, which is wonderful, especially for a small deer species, which, you know, deer generally want to hide. Um, but these guys have been really comfortable being out in the open. I mean, as evidenced by her giving birth out in the open, we had guests who were watching when it happened. Um, and I think they're just adorable. I think they've got wonderful little faces, great little personalities. They're just inquisitive and yeah, I love them. According to the zoo, southern poodoos reside in temperate rainforests and deciduous forests. They're also found in southern Chile and southwestern Argentina. The dad does not seem to care too much about the baby, which is not abnormal. Um, he was more interested in mom afterwards. Um, and mom's being great, being very attentive to the baby and um, making sure it's nursing, making sure it's staying safe in hidden places around the exhibit. So far, everything has been normal for the newborn, which has yet to be named. The average weight of an adult poodoo deer weighs between 15 to 30 pounds and stands